Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs and this is our part four of our quarantine quilt along. Welcome everybody. I hope you're still having fun and making some blocks. I've been looking through your comments. I got most of mine done, except I started putting them on up on my design wall thinking I can just arrange them and I was a block short. Well, come to find one on the floor. There's always that one that ends up on the floor, right? Now, thank you for all of your nice comments. It's really appreciated because as you can imagine, things are stressful over here we're trying to make everything work but just to reiterate our videos are loading fine if you're having trouble with uh, the wheel spinning and disconnecting from our feed it's probably on your end your your uh, internet so um, not much we can do about that except just smile take a breath and let's just be kind so keep um keep those comments that maybe don't are not appropriate in the back of your head or write them down or go scream them out, out your window or something. Okay, deal? Um, anyways, it's, it's, I got most of my blocks done. Now I've been seeing a lot of your great, great blocks. And I honestly, I can't wait to see all those quilts because they are so colorful and so different. And so here's a little check-in on some of our folks that have um, their blocks done. We have first up is Carolyn's blocks. Beautiful. I just love those fabrics. I just thought they were so bright and happy and fun and look how you can just use really wild uh, different prints and it's just gonna work. Uh, Sherry's, she's got hers done. Uh, she has, she's using one of my stash builder bundles from the store, from the GE design store and it's um, the American Spirit one. So really patriotic prints. They show off really nicely there. Um, Cheryl's, this is awesome. So Tula Pink, I've been waiting to see uh, some of the Tulas in there because I think these blocks just really are great for Tula Pink. If you love Tula Pink, it shows off the fabrics well. And then we have Debbie, Debbie Brown. She's going to be joining me a little bit later. These are her blocks. And I think uh, she's probably got them sewn, down, sewn together by now. She's so fast. Um, Deborah. Oh, there's Debbie. This is, <laughs> oh, these are Deborah's blocks. Deborah's blocks are freaking awesome. This is also a bundle that I put together, Stash Builder Bundle. Unfortunately, we sold out of this one. This was the happy hour bundle. And Car uh, Carrie, Carrie Carr, she's working at home in Minnesota. Um, New Leaf Stitches is her company, and she's obviously using her clearly perfect angles. And she was telling me that it works really well when sewing the diagonal. So really cool, cool stuff. I love those fabrics, those citrus fabrics. Uh, and then we have Carla's, <laughs> Carla's cat. Okay, so this was hilarious. This is Carla from Cherrywood. And uh, she said she's doing good. She's having a blast, but the cat, not so much. He's tuckered out, <laughs> all done. This is a mat marathon sewing day. Uh, okay, so we have Lee, her blocks. Uh, this is awesome because I think this quilt this pattern would work really well for all kinds of ombres so these are the uh the ombre confettis and so i think that'd be really cool for future um mary lee we have i just wanted to show you this i just th think this is my favorite block ever this fabric uh was a part of my, also a stash builder bundle that sold out really fast it was the tuscan tuscan delight um but i love this of course, Nancy has these amazing large scale florals. I just love that. How bright and fun are those? And then we have Nina. See, Nina is doing something totally different. She's gonna make a wall hanging and how cool is that? One fabric with just a colored strip between. I love it so much, Nina. Nina is a uh, free motion quilting or quilting designer. I think she teaches other stuff too. And I uh, got to know her when we were teaching together in um, Louisiana. So that was really, really fun to meet her. Good stuff, Nina. I love it. She said she's being a rebel with hers, which is totally appropriate and you should always be a rebel. All right. Now we have Rebecca's. Really fun. I love these colors. Just a mix of all kinds of really soft, beautiful spring colors with a little touch of um, kind of that sharp contrast. We have Sarah Beth and she's go. I just had to show you this one. I just love the puppy. He's like, mommy, you're too busy. 
stop sewing i need attention <laughs> um and we have tara oh i love that so these are black and white this is a great idea and just a pop of that bright yellow so cool i love that so great job and then we have arena and these were so awesome cave i think most of it at least a look alike yeah i think it's cave really really cool and even if you have really wild fabrics look how just as long as that strip contrast is going to be great all right and then we have last but not least wendy so cool red uh, white and black very very cool love that love that look so I, like i said i can't wait to see more now do you have any questions for me now should we scroll through real quick before we connect with debbie so um if you don't know debbie brown she is a quilting uh, extraordinaire so she teaches long arm quilting and she teaches a lot of free motion quilting and i've done some we've done some um tutorials where she came on my tipsy tuesday show and she wears a crown while she sews so i mean come on uh, what is not to love about debbie she's just the best and so much fun as well so you would love you will love her classes um, but let's see everybody's just giving great comments thank you everybody great uh, i know aren't these blocks just amazing so um i actually so the second part of our live on facebook that's the one we had the most issues with connectivity we, the video uh recorded fine for us but i noticed that facebook ha has also been really busy today so that we were having issues um loading things up on facebook i was even having issues trying to get your comments to come up so i actually uploaded the whole session to video to facebook too it's also on youtube so everything is gonna you're gonna have no trouble finding this after the fact all right so um now after seeing all these blocks are you thinking about your next elvira because i think actually debbie's already on that i think she's finished let's check in with debbie i've got to put this on so i can hear her hi D debbie is connecting with us from new york state yes just outside you, right so you are on complete lockdown for a while yes i'm uh i mean I'm for two weeks so our work ahead of y'all and the rest of the country here mm -hmm. uh but fortunately i have a room full of fabric uh, so i'll As sell for the next do many month. of us <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're training for this our whole lives exactly so you have a quilt top done i see i do um whenever i design I fat for work i usually work with fat quarters however i'm still a quilter and have an extensive fat quarter collection so it's been fun through all of that um i finished this one uh, maybe about two hours ago and then i started pulling fabric for this one um, i'm expecting some great nieces and nephews in your future so mine might look baby colors yeah. and i have um, I pulled up the next one yeah i was just saying Thank that we just saw some blocks with ombre i think it's a fabulous idea yeah. and the thing that i'm looking for is pulling these is hey, what will show the quilting well um, because I really want to show you how to machine quilt this. Like I'm sewing machine. Yes, that would be fabulous. Don't you think? Just, have a class just, on I think that'd your be fun. Elvira? Yes. I mean, we're going to have 10,000 finished quilt tops. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to get them quilted. So I, I plan to help you with that. So I um, a couple different things in mind. Uh, so one is free motion and one is with blocking foot. Oh, that's a great idea. I know a lot of Just, people are uncomfortable with the free motion right. and are scared of it. And um, some of us, no, no, it would not count me, but many <laughs> people are very particular, I should say, about their quilting and piecing and everything. And so maybe a walking foot will give them more control. Right. And it's a great place to start. I'm actually very comfortable with my free motion quilting, but I love the lines. A walking yeah. foot can do. It can do some really fun stuff yes oh i can't wait so we will for sure put links up and everything to find that mm -hmm. so debbie has a lot of online classes so i'm sure and you have groups on facebook too you even have quarantine quilting quarantine quilting.com um yes. where i put together a bunch of links from a bunch of designer friends just to keep us all busy 
Yes, that's that is a beautiful thing. So I think a lot of folks from that group are, have joined us here. So go find Debbie's group and join in for some more fun quilting ideas while we're all locked away, <laughs> but happily sometimes. Now, have you wearing a from, crown? Right, <laughs> you just put on your crown. And so, are you have have you heard from quilters that are having a hard time mentally or anything? Or I have. Groups? Um, what I've been hearing from um, folks in groups, we don't know what to do next. So I'm so great. You gave us an idea to do next. Something we got to, to do play with our fabrics mm -hmm. um, because the world is big and big decisions. It's so nice to have a concrete task. Okay, go find fabrics. Okay, yes. now we're gonna do this. Know what to do minute by minute. Okay, so thank you for really fun way. Um, I've put together some links of a bunch of my designer friends about fun projects to do quickly um, mm -hmm. because my attention span is a little shorter in the last week. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm in the kitchen, not but I don't remember why. <laughs> I think so it's also some... has something to do with what we're all going through. So it's yeah. a, kid, a big project that's really demands attention and detail and uh, something to be really precise. It's just not going to work when your mind is kind of elsewhere. So yeah. it's really great though to just do something mindless and really kind of let go of everything else for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so my patterns, have a, I have a lot, fat quarters, 10 inch squares, mm -hmm. two and a half inch strips. Anybody got those? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of those. I personally design with fat eight, which is um, right. an represented of the market, but uh, but I collect all as well. I, know, I love fat eights too. I, I think they're misunderstood as well, because <laughs> exactly. I like variety. I like to have variety. And you get so much, I love you put together your staff bust. Mm -hmm. um, collection so that we get a lot of variety without mm -hmm. having to go buy two yards of anything. Yeah, and those are work well because people sometimes are nervous about mixing different fabric lines, but sometimes for me that's what gives the quilt life. And right. um, I have so much fun putting them together because I can do themes or mm -hmm. just a colorway, or I find two, three really cool pa um, fabrics and I can pull all the basics and different geometric shapes for it all to work right. together. So, yeah. Um, but so, and any tips, anything that you've done making Elvira that has helped you? Well, not, not for making Elvira. As you're preparing this, prepare your backing and your batting with at least eight inches more each direction. So you want four inches all the way around of batting and backing. That's gonna mm -hmm. make it so much easier to handle when you put it through your machine. Great idea. So and eight if you are some short some quilters say six total. All right, mm. eight because eight. We're doing this ourselves. And, um, I want to be able to hold edge of the quilt as I'm quilting into the very end. And if I don't have any backing there. I have to mm. the quilt just with my tippy fingers, and that's not really very accurate. Um, oh, that's a great. You don't tip. have if you don't have enough fabric of the fabric you choose for your back. Um, like. To, just an inch or two around it. Sew something else to the outside just mm -hmm. to get something to hold on to. Great. That's a great These tip. Are kind of I've, I've done that. I thought I had planned and then all of a sudden, it, oops. <laughs> That's and it's good know, to have a stash over, to dive into. That leftover cat fabric, whatever else, just something to hold something to hold the quilt while you're quilting. That's a great idea. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, I'm so I have happy my blocks. Yes, and we I can't wait to see that ombre version. So I have my blocks up on my design wall, except missing one. <laughs> so I am gonna attempt to go over there and talk about the final layout with everybody. But thank you, Debbie, so much for being a part so of much. it and being live with me. Stay safe. You're gonna you just be happy in your little and you had your house renovated too yes my house was crushed by a tree six months ago and they uh, are almost finished building the interior but that's on pause right now so of course. Um, i don't have to listen to hammers and saws oh. all day so it's well equal. there's positive in everything <laughs> we're almost done we're almost oh, that's loving the progress all right well everybody say hi say bye to debbie thank you bye see you later all right, everybody. So we're gonna attempt, we put a camera way over there pointing at my design wall. 
So we're going to attempt to go over there and I'm going to show you and we're going to talk about the layout. So now that you have all your A blocks, all your B blocks and um, your, you have your setting rectangles cut out, it's time to put it all together. So I don't know if you have a design wall. Uh, I have a pretty big one because I have a really, I have a really privileged studio to work in. But if you don't have a design wall, this one is fairly simple. I would just kind of either find a long, a big table to lay them and you can lay them in rows and you can kind of overlap your blocks um, or use the floor. Of course, a lot of us have done that and uh, still do even sometimes when my design wall is busy. Um, but it's always helps to have a design wall and I'm going to give you just a few tips. So let's walk over there. So I hope you can hear me and see me. So I have my blocks up. Now I do have to rearrange a little bit because I just started on one end and kind of threw them up. I had about 10 minutes to do this. So I have a lot of orange and white over here and not too much black. So I have to kind of mix it more up and I have one black block here that is gonna be uh, put in there. But what I always recommend is uh, set the blocks up in the right layout with, a, with the angles going the opposite ways. So what you should see, if you're doing the lap size, so you start with your A block right at the top. So follow, I don't have my diagram, but follow the diagram. And so what you will see at the top, you will always have the middle strip going kind of opposite directions. And then the next row, it will also do that. It should also do that um, all the way through. So if you see a break in that pattern somewhere, um, then you probably placed uh, the wrong block in this in that spot. So it's really good to look at that. Um, however, the best advice and the best trick to to laying out a quilt is take a photo with your phone. So take a photo of it and then look at it on a smaller scale because then you really kind of see the patterns. You see if you turned a block wrong. So you just start. So the lap size has the four blocks in the first row. Uh, and then we have three blocks with the rectangle at the top and bottom, which creates the stagger and then so on. And of course, by seeing this, you'll see that there's nowhere to match anywhere. So if your blocks got a little undersized, it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to affect anything. So then once I'm happy with the layout, I also always take a picture when I think my colors are nicely spread out. So always when you're doing a scrappy quilt, you want to look at the color that is your strongest color. And sometimes it's your darkest color, but not always. Sometimes it's just your strongest value. And um, when we're working with color, red is always very strong. Purple is always very, very strong. And of course, if you have black in there, it's going to be strong. So for me, I have to make sure I spread my blacks out really evenly to so that my quilt is balanced so now right now they're all kind of on that one side so I want to spread them out more and um, kind of balance the quilt better but one other trick after I take the photo after I think the layout is good I take a photo just to look at the color spread and then I also check I switch it to black and white because then you really see contrast and so you see the values of the prints regardless of color so then you can see if you have kind of a cluster of really dark valued prints in one side and different everywhere else. So then you can kind of play around with moving them around so that your quilt gets really, really nice and balanced. So that is it. So then you just would sew the rows together. And for this one, since we don't have to match any seams, I just press all my seams down in one direction and then I start sewing the rows together. And so they should all fit. The lengths of the row should all be the same size if you trimmed your blocks. Now, if you were doing a different size block, I know some people had a little bit shorter fat quarters, so you weren't able to cut the 20 and a half, so you had to go down. So then you're not ending with a 21 and a half inch block. So if that's the case, just go ahead and sew everything together. Your rectangles will need to kind of be adjusted. So I like to do this when the, instead of trying to do the math and trim everything beforehand, I like to just sew my rows and then I will sew a uh, row one to row two. And of course the row two is gonna be a little bit longer. I will just center that row two on the row one and sew and then trim after the fact. Because this quilt has nothing going on the outside. You can always just chop top and bottom and you'll be just fine. 
So I'm gonna go back over there and see if you have any more questions for me for this live session. What do you think of my Halloween quilt? I think it's gonna be really fun for Halloween. So any last questions on um, the layout or anything that you want to want to um, hear from you, me? Thought you didn't like orange. Oh, somebody thought I didn't like orange. I, I like orange, especially Halloween, gotta have orange. Okay, so uh, just finished my first A block, but having fun, that's good, good. No stress, no stress ever in my classes or sew alongs ever. No, we just gotta have fun. All right, uh, trim after the fact, speed things up for, yes, exactly. Do you think a border would work for this Elvira? Um, it depends on what it is. I, when I do scrappy quilts like this, especially with big blocks, I think a border is kind of too much. I would, if I would do it, I'd probably do a scrappy border because that would just kind of meld in. Um, but you know, you never know. It just depends on the fabric and, and the width of it. And it's also, since it's a vertical kind of a roll quilt, it, I don't know how that would look. I, I probably would not do that, do it. I would just add rows, <laughs> add rows, make a bigger quilt. Um, I do. Okay. So Barbara's saying I do the camera thing, even with my stash, when I see what I need, it's a great idea. Take a picture of your fabrics. Um, all right. Great instruction tips on the lights and darks. That's good. All right. Uh, Sarah says BOB I'm following the pictures in session one but to me there are two bias one fits inside the block and one sticks out from the other side of the block so what we want is the bias edges inside the block so this bias so this is the bias and that's gonna be on the bottom because these strip strips were cut on the straighter grain yes this part and this part is bias but you want when we're sewing these two together this you want this bias edge to be down bias on the bottom all right um okay any other questions all right tina says this has been the best i was having a panic attack before sewing today i'm not one that gives in to them thank you so very much for doing this and the music is perfect oh thank you i appreciate it um it's that's exactly it even though we are normally not a stressful stressed out people this circumstance we're all going through together uh puts people on on edge so we just have to remember to be kind and just just love just do what we love and be kind to everybody um all right so Ellen says, this is a super easy pattern, but for some reason I can't get it in my head. I've done much more difficult quilts with less user error. Jack is getting a workout today. Well, it might be just what we said. You know, our brains are not functioning on full on all cylinders when we have a stressful situations going on in the world. So give yourself some love. Just, you know, go to have a cup of coffee, sip of water, or maybe a cocktail. Come back to it. <laughs> Um, how many more rows, uh, would I need for king size? So I, it would be kind of a, you could do a square quilt by just adding two rows to the queen that then it will be a square. I don't, um, king sizes are always a little, uh, you know, blurred. So that'd be about a 105 by 105. If you do two more rows, how do you tell bias? So if you are cutting just, um, fabric from from you know cutting into strips you're cutting on the straighter grain because off the bolt i don't have any fabric so off the bolt you know or a fat quarter the grain runs this way and this way so if we're cutting strips and squares and rectangles they're all on the straighter grain whenever we do a, a cut across diagonally any which way that is going to be a bias cut so you you'll feel it if you do that cut and you pull your fabric a little bit it will stretch so much more on the bias than on the straighter grain so that's why we want to keep the bias on the bottom bob because the feed dogs will help keep that stable. And of course the straighter grain cut strip will ke help keep it stable as well. All right. Um, curious about how many are viewing this time. Do we know how many are on? 1700. 1700, that is amazing. And we are going strong and I, I don't see any, there's no um, interruptions on our end, but I don't know what's happening on yours. I hope you're doing good. Um, 
Karen said, had to take a nap. Too many mimosas watching part four. I love that. <laughs> it's all good. Take a nap. So now we're going to have a couple of more hours or hour and a half until our last uh, session. I'm going to start looking online and see if you, some people are posting finished, finished projects and show you a lot, as many of those as I can. I'm going to have to play with my layout a little bit. I don't know if I can get them sewn in an hour or sewn together. Probably not because I will have to answer some of your questions and check in now if you have emailed me today I'm sorry. I have not gotten to my email at all today as you may understand um, I might have to go get a snack too and possibly Mix up a quarantini uh, If you didn't know about that one So one of my favorite things is making cocktails And so if you are new to Facebook and new to me, please join my Facebook group uh, Gudrun's Quilt Crew I go live every Friday and I include a cocktail every week uh, with your with a recipe so uh, maybe we'll have to pull up the recipe again for a quarantine for all when we do our ta-ta, ta-da, not ta-tas, ta-da moments. But um, we're going to end it. Winner. Oh, we forgot the winner. The winner, winner, winner. Winner from last session, for, so from the third session is Marsha Baker. No, 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 that's the wrong one. That was the wrong letter. Barbara, Barbara Wordeman. So sorry about that. I had the wrong piece of paper. It's been a long day, but I'm going to push through it. So Barbara, congratulations. You get a $25 gift card to the GE Design Store. We will reach out to you through Messenger or uh, if you send us your email, it'll be great. But that's it for me. I will see you back here in an hour and a half and we'll finish our quilt along up. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.